Alrighty, welcome back YouTube. Welcome back everybody to more MSQ playthrough of Shadowbringers. We are continuing with the journey heads in um, here in Amarang. We just got, I believe, like a tangerine or something or a nectarine of Halric's favorite food. And uh, we're going to talk to Tesslene. Let's go ahead and get into it. We're back. I hope you had a nice time. Did you manage to find a nectarine? Thank you. Alice has explained why I wanted this, has she? I can see it in your eyes. But we may not need it just yet. I spoke with the others and we've decided to keep an eye on Halric for now. Thanks to you, though, if his time does come suddenly, we'll be ready to send him on his way with a taste of happier days. Well, nothing is going to happen for a little while yet, so let's see if we can't lighten the mood. We don't want our gloomy faces worrying the patients. I think it's time for that welcome meal, don't you? Take a seat, and I'll make us a nice stew. You needn't have gone to the trouble. Oh, it's nothing, really. We do so rarely have guests. In a place like this, you learn to take what moments of happiness you can get. I remember when I first came here with my mother. She was showing the early signs. They travel from arms to stay here. Beaten and broken souls come to wait out the inevitable, to receive the mercy of a painless death. When my mother finally left this world, I was mad with grief, but also thankful that her passing was a peaceful one. Ending a life you've cared for, even when you believe they go on to a better place. I often find myself wishing the warrior of darkness would come and do that part for me. The warrior of darkness? That's the first mention. You've never heard the tale. I'm not sure where it began, but every child in Norvang could tell you a version of it. Warrior of darkness, servant of death. Take care of our souls at our dying breath. Let sinners and eaters of sin go with thee, that all may return to the sunless sea. Well, that's the version I was taught anyway. It's just an old bedtime story. He certainly never deigned to visit us here. Which is a good thing, surely. He sounds rather ominous. Do you think so? I always liked the idea that he treated every soul the same, even the Sin Eaters.
And he's in Halric! I swear, I only took my eyes off him for a moment. How do you lose? Anyways. MS, Galase, we have to go look for Halric. I don't know what's gotten into him, but if he's wandered out there alone, well, assign search areas and split out. Any idea where he might be headed? No, he's never done anything like this before, but it can't be a coincidence that the other patients are suddenly so agitated they can sense something. In any case, let's keep the search close to the inn. Halric isn't sure on his feet, so he won't have gone far. I'll search the east side. Please, Halric, please be all right. I'll cover the north and west then. You take everything from here to the south. It's been a... It's been a handful of days since I've recorded, so... If any of the voices are off, that's why. Oh, yes. One of the best songs in the game. You see no sign of Halric. Maybe he went further west. You scan your surroundings in search of Halric and suddenly find yourself under attack. level are we were 73 okay like that took a little while to kill oh you weren't even facing me stupid Not Tesslin, dude. No. Ah. 
That was unexpected. That's going to transform her. That's not creepy at all. Jesus. Well, it's like my job here is done. Okay, so then we just need to be on the lookout for something with half a wing. Well, that was horrifying. I'm sorry, Mesk. I tried to tell the cares what happened, but it can't be the shoulder they lean on. I don't like this. It's just so unfair. Esling was always so cheery with the patients, telling them not to be scared, that there wouldn't be any pain. All the people in the world to suffer such a fate. I imagine you're just as shocked as the rest of us, so I'd appreciate what you're doing here. Me, I can barely... I don't have the words. Without a body, we can't even give her a proper burial. She cared about that sort of thing, about giving people the chance to say their goodbyes. Alric is as unresponsive as ever. He stands motionless, staring up into the sky where the Sin Eaters made their escape. spoken with the cares. Thank you. What you're doing, it means a lot to them. To me. Sorry to interrupt. We, uh, we realized we hadn't thank you for rescuing Halric. You weren't hurt at all, were you? It wasn't even a fight. It was too late, too slow. I thought I could protect you. You can't blame yourself for things beyond your control. You brought Halric back safe and sound. No one could have done any more. I'm 
sorry. I've come to a decision. I won't be continuing in my role here. I hope you will forgive me for leaving you, and that you will delay Halric's last meal for as long as you possibly can. Not until it's too late, of course. Just give him what time you can. We always do. Of course. She would have done the same. Farewell, Halric. Keep Teslin's words close to your heart. Wait. Are you leaving this very moment? I understand how you must feel, but surely this is all a bit hasty. Do you even have anywhere to go? I have a destination in mind, yes, and end a purpose. This damned light, building without cease, is the reason we can't save those corrupted by the Eaters. But what if we corrected the balance, even if it were only little by little, even if it took years, it would surely make things better. Now hold on there. Everyone knows there's too much light, but how you ever hope to get rid of it, you'd have to change the whole world. That's right. We should return to the Crystarium. I may not be able to repel the Eaters on my own, but I can still use the skills I have gained here to hurt them. the Crystarium? I can't fly. This is going to be a long trip, so we'll see you in a sec. Forgive me, Amask. I couldn't stay there a moment longer, but I was serious about what I said. While the men and women at the inn battle against this blight with kindness, I must fight it in my own way, with steel. May I see a sword in the darkness? Novron's sword in the light. Oh, it's above. It feels like an age ago now. Miss Alizé, is there anything I can get you? Your swift is Amaral. I need to return to the Crystarium immediately. A as you wish. Remind me to wear goggles if we ever fly over our meringue again. I've barely gotten the sand out of my eyes. But the wind did help to clear my head at least. I think I'm ready to meet with the Exarch. We need to talk about how we're going to wipe the Sin Eaters out. Shall we? Thank you for seeking me out, Amask. It means a lot to have you there at my side. In looking at Alphanod, I'd say he's as eager as to begin with this discussion as I am. I say we lay our experiences before the Exarch and step back to see what kind of picture they make. Then, we can decide where to go from here. Creature we call light creatures, 
from what we have been able to ascertain, only a handful of these entities exist. Just as an ant colony will perish in the absence of its queen, we believe that the death of a light worker would cause the lesser creatures within its sphere of influence to disperse. I have a feeling Yormo might have something to say about any concerted action we take against these monsters. Fortress Commander of the Sphinxes is integral to the Amoran society. In seeming to guarantee his people's safety, it guarantees their obedience. We will not take kindly to us depriving him of such useful allies in his work. Agreed. Thus we will need to occupy or otherwise divert his fortress whilst we proceed with the business of eliminating the Yorms. Until we have done so, all other considerations must be set aside if we are to restore the eighth humble calamity. Are you sure that eliminating the wardens will be enough? That's cool. In the ancient past, a single star was divided into fourteen worlds. This is the source to your home. These others are the thirteen shards, in whose number you find your birth. Though physically separate, they retain a connection to each other called the source of special. Now, let us assume that a given element in one of the shards abnormal ascendancy. Just as water will flow from the highest point to the lowest, the excess energy will begin trickling into the sphere. And such an influx of ether will of course exert a palpable influence. If the element in question were fire, then drought and wildfires might ensue. If it were ice, one might expect the weather to turn bitterly cold. As ether continues to pour in, such phenomena will become more and more extreme, until eventually, a single, untimely event triggers a disaster which cracks the barrier dividing the two worlds. shard lungs and rejoin the other source. At the same time, the element which held sway in the shard is unleashed in full. Its energies amplify the original disaster to truly catastrophic proportions. An earthquake thus magnified might strike with enough force to shatter continents. A tidal wave might swell to a size capable of drowning entire nations. These devastating events are what we refer to as umbral calamities. Seven times has a calamity befallen the source. Seven times has a shard been absorbed. the light drowned realm of the first stands perilously close to meeting the conditions for the rejoining. It is the Sphinxes who are to blame for the light's continued demise. In addition to attracting their lesser kin, 
The light wardens I mentioned earlier radiate ether, saturating every corner of their territory with light. Even here in the Bloodspare region of Morton, their influence is strong enough to banish night from the sky. Thus, if we are to restore balance to the forest and head off a potential calamity, it is imperative that we put each and every light warden to the sword. We've been doing our best to take the fight to the enemy ever since we first heard the Exarch's explanation. Though we have yet to claim any meaningful victory with truth be told, apart from being confoundingly elusive, the Light Wardens possess a troublesome quality which compelled us to delay our plans until such time as we arrive. Forgive the interruption, my lord, but Hallminster Switch is requesting reinforcements. They say the Sin Eaters are attacking in force, and the village could soon be overrun. Alert the guard. We should be prepared in case the fighting reaches the Crystallian. You have command of our forces in the field, Captain, but hold off on entering the town until I arrive. That goes for Altano and Alize as well. My lord. Pray, lend us your strength. Such a fight will provide you with far greater insight than any explanation I could offer. Almost the switch is in the north of Lakeland, so we had best make haste with all preparations. In fact, meet me outside the Crystarium at the crossroads northwest of the Ancestor Gate. I shall lead you there myself. Sorry, I had to like sneeze in the middle of that, and I had to make sure I did it. Alright, I'm going to actually go attune to Fort Job in the north, and then we will go to uh, the belt right there. So we'll see you in a sec. Alright. All set. If we follow this road north, we will arrive at the northern staging point. The village itself lies not far beyond. Quickly now. Don't tell me this went to Fort Job anyways, let's see. Oh, it goes way past. I guess it could have went to the Exarch first. Aether Current. Definitely grab that. the Rock Tika Greatwood. I was like, what is the adjoining area?
Omens to switch us past these gates and through the woods. It's not exactly a near neighborhood to the Crystaria, but as we occupy the same region, we've built up something of a cooperative relationship. What can we expect inside, Captain? The town is, best by, is beset by a swarm unlike any we have seen in recent years. We did our best to evacuate the villagers, but as many as half remain. Judging by the number of eaters present, we have good reason to believe that a light warden leads the attack. How convenient. It seems we'll have our chance to slay a warden sooner than expected. One does not simply slay a warden. Has no one told you what happens if you defeat one of those fiends? They hold more light inside them than all of their underlings put together. It can be struck down, aye, but its essence won't dissipate like the weather kind. The weaker kind. Vile Aether will billow outwards and envelop the nearest living being. A reckless young swordswoman, perhaps, turn her into a brand new warden. Ah, well, you can leave that particular quandary to us. I must ask that the guard stand down and allow us to engage this leader of Eaters alone. Concentrate on the survivors. We must save every life we can. But what if I... Understood, my lord. As captain of the guard, however, I will not watch you brave such danger without an escort from our ranks. I insist that I go with you. Very well. Then our warden slaying party shall include myself, the Louviers, Captain Lena, and last but not least... Formidable group indeed. From to home sister we go. Once we reach the Light Warden, do not hold back. We strike to kill. Now let's see if we can get a queue within five, ten minutes. I'll give it ten minutes. And we'll see you if and when the queue pops. All right, we got in. It took about actually 60 seconds, so. God, I'm, and I'm tanking. Okay. Not nervous at all. No, no, no. Oh. oh, that's cool. They just killed the bear, and that's why it churns. Things hit so hard.
God, that sound was way too loud. Who's up first? The light? The, one of the light ones. Oh, this is the one with the half wing. Okay, so supposedly when you defeated the light, maybe that's not a light warden, because it's supposed to like have its aether spill over and stuff.
Man, there's a there's a lot in the field. As far as like these little cocoon things that can be become the uh, centimeters, there's so many. seemed like the white mage wanted more. They kept kind of like inching this way, so I will oblige. Then I think this is going to be Tesslene. Yeah, this is Tesslene. Ah, oh, so sad. Tesslene the Forgiven. Oh, no. Come here. Tesslene. Poor, poor Tesslene, man. Oh. Now she's gone. Oh, they're going to turn. Yep.
Ooh, that's a big cocoon. That was a big boy. This is the final boss. So then this is the Light Warden. Yep, sure is.
curious to see if there's going to be a cutscene for like what happens after because it's dead like she said like Lena said it's supposed to have its aether spill out so let's see Do we? And how do you know of this? And the hero who wields it now stands before you. Ah, I see. I see. Than the night sky. That's actually got a little chilly. That was pretty cool. That was, oh man. Goosebumps. Dude, you know how many people are going to be seeing the night sky for the first time in their life? Is that what I think it is? The night sky, as it should be. Who are you people? You killed a warden, then bathed in its ether as if it were a spring shower, and now the sky? The legends are true. My lord? How many years have I waited for this moment? 
for the one possessed of her blessing for you. You have vanquished the Light Warden of Lakeland, and for the first time in a century, darkness has returned to the mantle of light. Without the ever-present light to sustain them, the Sin Eaters will have no choice but to retreat. Yet our victory is far from complete. Though darkness has fallen here, the other Wardens yet bask beneath burning skies, feasting upon what little life remains. Even should it cost me all I have, I would see each and every one of them slain, that this world might be spared from oblivion. Not only for the first, but for the source as well. Save one, and we save the other. But, be that as it may, I concede it was wrong of me to summon you to this fight against your will. I swear, on my life, I will one day atone for that deed. But for the present, I beg you, stay and see this fight to its conclusion. Cast down the Wardens and restore darkness to the first. I will become the warrior you need. On behalf of the first, I offer you my deepest thanks. I understand there is much at stake here, Exarch, but why do you risk yourself so readily? It must have been a dangerous drain on your ether to summon even one person at this rate. I do it for my people, of course. To give the Crystallian what tomorrow it deserves. That is true now, yes, but the city had yet to be built when you first called forth the Crystal Fountain. I'm simply curious to know what prompted you to commit yourself so completely to this particular course. we can ill afford to lose. And I sensed from the first that I had a part to play in preserving them. <laughs> Forgive me. I fear the events of the day may have taken their toll. Despite appearances, I am an old man. One burdened with many difficult memories, some too painful to recall. Sorry for pressing. It's a family failing, I'm afraid. <laughs> While it just served us well, the one in the fountain. Needless to say, we will continue to fight at your side until the last Sin Eater is defeated. Come then, my warriors of darkness. Let us gather the surviving villagers and make our way back to the Crystallia. Wow, that was quite epic. It's going to do it for this one, though, and we'll see you in the next one. So like the video if you enjoyed the journey and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of it.